Welcome to today's broadcast of Sun, Salt, and Light. Sun, Salt, and Light, S-O-N, knowing and growing in your daily relationship with Jesus Christ, but also being the salt and the light in your marriage, in your family, at your place of work, at your church, and even in the community you're in. I'm Pastor Michael Petit. This is a radio ministry of our church, Calvary Chapel Divine, here in Divine, Texas. We are so glad that you joined us for today's broadcast. We are a Calvary Chapel, so we simply teach the Bible verse by verse, chapter by chapter. We believe that God uses His Word to transform, restore, and to change lives one verse at a time. If you're visiting our area, you'd like to get information about our church or church service times, maybe even track down some of the other teachings that we have available through podcasts, whether it's through Audible or Spotify or Apple Podcasts, you can do all of that at our church website at calvarydivine.org. That's calvarydivine.org. Ever. If you're blessed with kids, praise God. Eventually those kids will not be with you, meaning they will all begin to move out, they grow up, and then you start having grandkids. You need to be praying like, Lord, bless me with a wife. That needs to be a prayer. But that means in the time that you're waiting to be blessed with a wife, you need to be preparing yourself and seeking the things that God is trying to show you as an individual what needs to be worked on. We need to wake up, but sometimes you will not catch the signal, hey, I put this person in front of you. Nope, you're red lighting over here at pornography. You miss that person because of it. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. Second Corinthians 3.18 says, But we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord are being transformed into the same image from glory to glory just as by the Spirit of the Lord. Ephesians 5.18, we'll be going over this next week. And do not be drunk with wine in which is dispensation, but be filled with the Spirit. You need to be filled with the Spirit. Stop filling yourself with the things of this world. Stop. It's it's, no matter what your, your worst day is, no matter what sin that you're in today, God's grace, if you repent and you confess it, you can be forgiven. But it is a relationship. We talked about that Wednesday night. It is a fr- like Abram was a friend of God. And that to be a friend, that means you actually spend time with each other. That's my father. I'm his child. Do you not think that the father wants to spend time with his child? We need to spend that time with him. We need to remember that it's it, like to grieve the Holy Spirit is to afflict with sorrow. It's the third person of the Trinity. You're afflicting the third person of the Trinity with sorrow when you're diving into your sin, when you're putting on all these things. He's like, these things got to go. We have these two verses as we look at how the Holy Spirit is grieved in Isaiah. The nation of Israel did it all the time in Isaiah 63, verses 9 through 10. In all their affliction, he was afflicted, and the angel of his presence saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them, and he bore them and carried them all the days of old. But they rebelled and grieved his Holy Spirit. So he turned himself against them as an enemy, and he fought against them. You want to keep running to the things of this world? God will give you over to the things of this world. And you go, but I'm his child. He, you want to follow the false things of this world? You want to believe that a woman, uh, a man can have a baby? That's not, that's not true. You want to believe, well, I'm a female, now I can become a man. That's not true. Don't believe the lie. But if you choose to go down that path, God will allow you to go down it. And I can show you testimony after testimony of kids that were 13 11 that are like I wish they never would have did what they did and the health issues that they have are tremendous they'll be lucky if they live to 40 because of what they did to their bodies but if you choose to follow these things and you continue to keep grieving the Holy Spirit you eventually quench the Holy Spirit 
And you'll come up to a debased mind and you'll just start chasing the things of the world. And that's what happens. And that's why it's important for us to speak truth. I speak truth because it says that God created a male and fe female. I speak truth that God says you're not to lie with a woman as you do with a man. And a man as with a man. It's in the Bible. It's in the Old Testament and the New. You can't get away from it. It's truth. But we're not willing to speak that anymore. And so what we're seeing is we're seeing the Holy Spirit be grieved. We're seeing Christians, actually progressive Christians, saying, oh, you can, no, you can do that. That's not true. That's not true. And do you realize that those are some of the most well-attended churches in this, in this country? Because they're being told what they want to hear. They, you know what they appeal to? They appeal to your emotions and your feelings. And God does not care about your emotions and your feelings. He cares about your obedience. He cares about your obedience. He loves you enough to say, look, what, what that is, is it goes against my word. And you're grieving the Holy Spirit. And if you continue to do this, you're going to quench the Holy Spirit. And we need to be very careful that we don't do that. We think, oh, it's just a little bit. I just want to dabble in it. Man, yeah, how many people do you see that are dabbled into drugs in our, in our cities and are completely lost, demonically addicted, demonically homeless of depression? They've given themselves over to a debased mind. And what does the government do? Hey, let's hand them some needles. Let them kill themselves. It should sadden us as Christians to see what's happening in this world. We stand for truth, but we need to, at the end of the day, we, we should, it shouldn't be us grieving the Holy Spirit. Hebrews chapter 3, verses 7 through 10 says, Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says today, if you will, be, if you will hear His voice, do not harden your heart as in rebellion in the day of the trial in the wilderness where your father tested me, tried, and saw my, work, my works for 40 years. And therefore, I was angry with that generation and said they... They will always go astray in their heart and they have not known my ways. Be patient and seek the cross. Don't allow yourself to be filled with the old man or old woman. Right? Don't go back to the things that, of this world. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. And finally, we see do as Christ did in verses 31 through 32. Now we're going to get a whole list of things that we have to put away and some of these we've already gone over so i won't spend a lot of time with wrath and anger let all bitterness wrath anger clamor and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and so he's saying bitterness is uh man this is a in the greek is i love it it is extreme enmity and a sour temper extreme enmity with a sour temper a temper and so when we allow uh, bitterness to um, take over, it doesn't just it do, it doesn't affect just one area of our life. It actually becomes bitter roots that go deep into our heart, and they need to be pulled out. They need to be put away. And when when those roots begin to to work in the heart, it defiles the rest of the heart. It bitterness is a is a dangerous thing. Psalm 64 3 says, Who sharp their tongue, uh, sharpen their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, bitter words. Ever met somebody like that? Where they just, man, their, their tongue is so sharp, everything they're throwing at you is nothing but bitterness. Bitter words. Romans chapter 3, verse 14 says, Whose mouth is full of cursing and bitterness. In James chapter 3, verses 14 through 15, But if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the, other, uh, against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but is earthly, sensual, and demonic. When you allow bitterness to, to take root, and you allow it to control your life, because bitterness is just jealousy. It's, it's hostility towards somebody. And, and I love, I, I don't know who, it was an unknown author, but I love this. 
Bitterness is like drinking poison and waiting for the per other person to die. You, who's being affected? You. You're allowing it to just run down and, and just take over. And, and when we allow bitterness to, to have more control in our lives than we should, it, it can make you physically sick. It actually starts to, to affect your body. You can actually, bitterness, will, you, you actually want to harm the pro, person emotionally. When you allow the, the root of bitterness to, to take root, you're, you're not happy emotionally and you want that other person to hurt the same way you're hurting. Bitterness destroys relationships with others. Because what happens is because you're so bitter, you can't let go of this thing. So every person that you meet, if they are not in the same opinion of you, you don't want nothing to do with that person. It affects your relationships. You're like, I only want people around me that are going to have the same opinion that I have of that person or this situation. Bitterness also demolishes our, 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 our um, spiritual outlook. What I mean by that is like what we do is we, it, it starts affecting our worship. It starts affecting our worship. It, it starts affecting the way that we, we, we come into fellowship. It affects everything that we, when we're spending time with God, because we're so bitter, we can't let it go. And let me tell you, when you have bitter people in the church, it destroys the church. It will destroy a ministry. It can destroy a marriage. It can destroy a family. Bitterness needs to be put away. And if you have bitterness towards somebody today, you need to ask God to help you uproot that out of your heart. And if it's gone on for more than a year, it's going to be a hard pull because it's affected every other area of your heart. Wrath, we talked about uh, last week in, in some great detail. Just remember, wrath is when anger, unrighteous anger, goes on too long, it becomes wrath. And it's that shotgun blast. It's carnage and violence and damage. And then we also had anger last week. We went over that about unrighteous anger. Unrighteous anger is, is when you have deep uh, resentment and it seethes. And then it, eventually it's all selfish and then it has to go somewhere. And when that anger has nowhere else to go, it becomes wrath. So we have to put that away. Then we have clamor. A word that we usually don't use that much, right? Clamor. But I love what it says in the Greek. Clamor means to actually croak. And what it means by croaking is you croak the way that a raven croaks. Or you're croaking the way that a donkey croaks makes noises right you're you're so angry your outcries of bickering and and shouting that's what it sounds like like a raven that's that's what it sounds like and he's saying you got to put all of that away that clamor and and let me tell you something bitterness and clamor go hand in hand because when you're bitter you're going to clamor you're going to clamor and then he says evil speaking. Another word for that is slander. Some of y'all may have slander in your Bibles. Evil speaking. So you're railing against someone. And, and the, the word in the Greek, I love this, is, is the, it's speech that intends to injure the other person. You want the other person hurt by speech. That means you're going to say things you're going to try to find as big of an audience that you can find. And you're going to try to hurt that person's reputation. You're going to try to destroy them and injure them with words. That's what evil speaking is. And guess what? Bitterness and clamor go with evil speaking. Because if it goes on too long, it becomes evil speaking. You're willing to lie. And, and, and man, even if you go, I've met people that have done this. You're willing to lie to get that person out of here. That's what evil speaking is. It's blasphemy. Is what the word, the, the, the word actually is, it comes from is blasphemy. And, and, and when we talk about blasphemy, it's evil speaking, meaning that you would be willing to lie and to sow discord into somebody intentionally. That's from the devil. 
That is from the devil. And so you need to put that stuff away. But then he says all malice. And malice is just depravity, uh, is wickedness, and, and, and it's wickedness to where you're not ashamed to break the laws. I don't care who I have to... Remember we talked about it, all the false testimonies that have happened. Under oath, you're okay with breaking the law because I need to make sure I have not only malice, but I also have evil speaking because I'm willing to do whatever I have to do to get rid of that person. We have a lot of that going on today in the world, but it shouldn't happen in the church. It shouldn't happen in your family. It shouldn't happen in your marriage. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 1, it says, Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all speaking. But then he finally finishes with Ephesians 4.32, And be kind to one another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. And the word that he puts here is the present imperative, meaning continually be kind to one another. Not just the days you feel like it. I feel like being kind today. No, you need to be kind all the time. That's what he's telling you. You continually to be kind. Continually to be kind. You're, you're in, in, you know, it's, it's meaning that your goodness is being used out of service to God. Being kind. You're, you're willing to be used in, in a good way for God. In service. In serving. And can I tell you that's something that this church has done tremendously. And you go, man, there ain't that many people here. But this church has done that for this community and this high school. We, I mean, I've seen y'all step out in faith and do things that y'all are always being kind. And I love that about y'all. I, I, as a pastor, I... Man, I can't ask anything else. You know, it's it, at the end of the day, we 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 want to we want to be an uh, an impact to the community. But it starts in our marriages and our families. And I've seen that in y'all. And it, it's for a pastor, it's it's one of the things that it, that I love, that I love. And the ones that I don't know yet, I'd love to get to know you more and, and, and just see what God does in your life and in your marriage. In Luke chapter 6, verse 35 and 36, it says, But love your enemies and do, not, and do good, and lend, hoping for nothing in return, and your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, for He is kind to the un unthankful and evil. Therefore, be merciful, just as your Father also is merciful. We're also to be tender-hearted. And that word means just to have compassion for each other. That's all that means, is that we have compassion for each other. That, and to be tender-hearted actually means that it comes from a spirit of empathy. <laughs> the Greek word says that it actually had to have strong bowels. Right? As you get older, that's not, a, not an issue. But the thing he's talking about is spirit of empathy. That means that it comes deep from within your heart. That's what they would describe as the bowels during this time when they would write the New Testament. From the bowels, from the bottom of your heart, you're tenderhearted. That's how much you care. That's how much compassion you have for somebody. And that's important. Galatians chapter 6 verse 2 says, Bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. Christ told you to love your, your neighbor as yourself. And, and we are to do that. And that means that we're not only going to be there uh, for somebody emotionally, but physically, but also spiritually. And we have compassion. Man, let me tell you something. As a pastor, it breaks my heart to see y'all go through things. But you know what I find? I'm spending a lot of time praying. A lot of time praying. A lot of time watching people that are being kind to one another, that have compassion for one another, that are stepping out in faith and trying to help the other person. 
And it may be something where we go, man, how much more can a church, this little church, take? A lot more because God's got bigger things planned. It's coming. And with this group, y'all are going to be like, oh, yeah, I remember back in, I, I remember Pastor Joe telling me. He was, uh, Pastor Louis had left to plant his church. And, and um, man, it was a rough year. We had half the church go to uh, Calvary New Life. And I was a servant there. I think I was a deacon or maybe an elder. I wasn't sure. I may have been a deacon at the time. And I remember him telling me it was a rough two years. The years were extremely hard. And I remember him telling me, just as tender-hearted as he could say it, with, his, with, with compassion. This has been probably the hardest year of ministry I've ever been through. And that man had been doing, doing ministry since the 80s. And I was like, to me it was normal because I was young in Christ. You know, I was like, okay, I thought this is just how it was going to be. And then I heard pastors when COVID happened say this has been probably one of the hardest times that I've ever been through as a church pastor. And they've been pastoring for 40 years. And we just planted the church and I'm like... So when these things happen, I'm like, okay, here we go. God's going to show up in amazing ways in your lives. But just be, keep being kind and tenderhearted. Keep loving each other. Forgiving each other. That's the other thing He tells us to forgive each other. Forgiving one another. As Christ has forgiven us and and you know, that's the thing. When we forgive somebody, it's, it's, it's to pardon or to extend the person that's hurt us to forgive them. And, and you can have somebody who's done something to you when you were a child and you go, well, do I need to call that person? No, you just need to forgive them, give them over to God, and you're done. You forgive them. Maybe you had a rough childhood or you, you had a parent where you just were like, I remember my wife saying my her her mom had a is it a fifth or a sixth grade education. My mom did the best with what she had. And I forgive her. And I just that blew me away. That she would forgive that. All the and they went through a lot as kids. A lot of physical abuse, a lot of verbal abuse, a lot I mean they just went through a lot. And God had put her in that place to just, I forgive her. Now, should, did she go and tell her mom that? No. It was just something that God had put on her heart that day. And that's important for us to remember. It's like, like forgive the other person. I've had people tell me, you're mad at me. I'm not, I've already forgiven you. I don't know what you're what that's about but i forget man like dude i forgave you bro i can take it i didn't take it personal i knew you were having a rough time it's okay but we have to forgive each other but that means that you when when mike's having a tough day give me a little grace pull me aside and say hey bro you okay you see it right and so we need, to, we need to forgive each other. We need to forgive each other. And, and, and uh, it's important for us to do that. And I think sometimes we don't hang on to something. Don't hang on to it. Give it over to God. Give it over to God. And Luke 17, verses 3, th 3 and 4, it says, Take heed to yourself. If your brother sins against you, rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. If he sins against you seven times in a day, and seven times in a day returns to you saying, I repent, you shall forgive him. Why do we do it? Because Christ has forgiven us. I love what, what Martin Lloyd-Jones says. He says, I say to the glory of God in, in utter humility that whenever I see myself before God and I realize even something of what my blessed Lord has done for me, I'm ready to forgive anybody of anything. If we really know Christ as our Savior, our hearts are broken 
and cannot be hard and we, can re- and, and we cannot refuse to forgive. It's not that hard that we cannot forgive. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 32, And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God in Christ forgave you. A lot of things you've got to put off. But there are a lot of great things that Paul gives us to put on. I think that's the beauty of this scripture is that you see the things that we're supposed to put on. He doesn't just tell you do this, do this, do this. He says, no, get rid of that. But man, look at this. Do that. Put that on. He gives you the example. He tells you exactly what to work on. Man, if you're a teacher or a coach, that's exactly what you want to be able to give your teammates or your students. Hey, this is what's on the exam. Here you go. Don't worry about those things. Put those things off and put these things on. Now next week he's going to talk to you about walking. Walking in the light. Walking in humility. And so we we will change gears and and, uh, head into chapter 5. And so um, I I hope this this helps. I mean at the end of the day we, we all have something that we need to put off and put on. Every one of us do. Okay? I'm sorry. We all have something. There's no perfect person in any church. Christ was the only person of perfection. The Son of God. And every time we walk into a church, it becomes imperfect. Because we're imperfect people. But work on these things. Allow Christ to work on your heart. And if there's something where you go, man, I think I may have lied or... I may have clamored this week. I may have sounded like a donkey at work. (laughs) Or like the raven. Ah! You know? That's all you sound like. Take a step back and say, Lord, help me with my clamoring. Help me to put on being kind and tenderhearted. Help me to forgive. If that person's hurt you, don't let bitterness take root. Don't let it take root. The longer you let it sit there, the deeper the roots will get. And the harder it is to pull out. And that's why it hurts so bad sometimes when God shows you something and it hurts. Like you get convicted really hard. It's because God's saying that root, that root is very deep and it needs to go. Don't let them take root. Deal with them. Deal with them. Forgive each other. Well, that concludes today's broadcast of Sun, Salt, and Light Radio. We hope that you enjoyed it. If you'd like to submit a prayer request or get in contact with us or find out service times, you can do all of that at our website, uh, as well as get uh, our podcast at Spotify, Audible, TuneIn Radio. Pretty much wherever you can find a podcast, uh, you, you can just type in Sun, Salt, and Light, and you'll find it. 